Hi guys. So this is a video for helping with learning and practicing the Pikemen's March and the Battle of Waterloo on the practice channel for the Great Highland Bagpipe. And we'll go through them at a few different speeds. If you want to jump ahead to any particular speed or if you want to skip over my talking and my introduction here, then you can go click on the minute markers below in the description. I'll put timestamps there. Uh, as well as links to my website, to my Facebook artist page, to my YouTube about page. You can use any of those to contact me if you want a copy of the sheet music. If you have any requests for another tutorial or another tune you would like to learn, let me know. So a couple technical things to start with before we just launch into the tune. Uh, in the Pikeman's March, at the end of line two, in the middle of the second part, there's a very quick succession of four notes. Uh, well, five if you're going to the beginning of the next bar. So you're going to want to start by practicing that on its own, probably, before you plug it into the tune. Make sure you can do it slowly, really comfortably and cleanly. Because as we all know, old habits die hard, right? Um, the Pikeman's March is also a real trap for crossing noises between D and E, so watch out for those. Really, really listen for those. There's a few, uh, tr a few risks of crossing noises in the Battle of Waterloo as well. In the Battle of Waterloo, we've also got a few Tarluas. So if you haven't learned Loom Luas yet, uh, do go and practice those first because those are the foundation for Tar Luas. Um, whereas the Tar Lua, just to break it down a bit, we only ever see it in the Battle of Waterloo from a low A going to a low A. So that's played like this. I'm starting on low A. I'm playing low G, D grace note, E grace note, and when I lift my ring finger, I'm already lifting my pinky in preparation for going back to, boom, low A. I'll play that a few more times, slowly. gradually, once comfortable, speed it up. The other last thing I want to point out that's a real pitfall in these tunes is measure 10 is almost identical in both tunes, measure 10 in both tunes, and except for the grace notes. And especially when you're memorizing it, it is so hard to keep it straight which one's which and not play them both the same way. So be very conscious when you're practicing and when you're playing it that measure 10 in the Pikeman's March goes No grace notes between the high A and high G, and no grace note between the high G and the E. Whereas in the Battle of Waterloo, you've got a strike between the high A and the high G, and a thumb grace note between the high G and the E. But otherwise, the melody notes are the same, right? So very easy to mix those up. Um, I think that's about it. So let's dive into playing the tunes straight through. So we'll start at a nice slow tempo. Quarter note is set to 54 beats per minute. One, two, three, four.
Now a little faster, 63 beats per minute. Now 72 beats per minute. One, two, three. tempo 80 beats per minute
So thanks for watching, and I hope you found that helpful. If you want to practice it even slower than the slowest tempo I picked, you can go down to the gear icon in the corner of the YouTube player. It has a little settings icon where you can change the playback speed to slower, um, you know, 0.75 speed playback, uh, half speed playback, or even faster. So, happy practicing, good luck, let me know if there's another tune that you would like a tutorial for. Cheers!